everyone, my name is Miss Lauren, and today we're here at our City Blossoms Garden on Marion Street. Even though we can't be here with our neighbors and friends, we want to thank everyone for doing their part, for being at, staying at home, and staying healthy, because we think that's pretty heroic. Today, we have a special task for our friends at home. We're going to go on a virtual tour, and I'm going to show you how to build your own super plant. Come with me and I'll show you how. Here's an example of a super plant one of our garden friends made with us a couple years ago. In her drawing, she made sure to include all the plant parts that help make this plant strong and healthy. I've decided to name this super plant the Fantastic Fruiter. She's ready to join the garden league. And before you get to work inventing her teammates, I want to investigate her plant parts and how they make her powerful. At the base of our Fantastic Fruiter, we have her roots. The roots anchor our Fantastic Fruiter into the soil and pull up nutrients for the rest of the plant to use. Then we have her stem which acts as the backbone of the plant and supports everything that's above ground. We have her leaves that convert energy from the sun and create sugars and other foods that the, need, that the plant needs to grow. Above the leaves, we have our flowers, and those flowers attract pollinators, which in then can turn into our fruits. Our fruits are great food for our animal friends, who then disperse the seeds that are contained inside of the fruits to other parts of the garden and make, make it possible for other baby fantastic fruiters to grow. Thanks for joining me. Here, we have our first version of roots that we're gonna show. And this is a common root system that is commonly found with our chickweed. Our chickweed likes to grow very close to the ground, um, but it has very fine, hair-like, web-like root system. Our spring onions, on the other hand, have really straight and coarse roots that help it grow straight and sturdy. So what we have here is our yarrow plant. And as you can see, these stems are green and they bend and they're a lot more flexible than say this plant over here. This plant, this stem is more like a branch and it's woody, which means it's not as flexible as our yarrow stem. So here we have two types of our edo leaves. And believe it or not, these are the same type of plant. This is a kale, and this is a kale, but they're different varieties. Over here, we have our dino kale. And it's called dino kale because it has a rough leaf skin that would kind of feel like a dinosaur. Over here, we have our curly kale that has a curly edging along the leaf. And then, if we look at coloring, our dino kale is a little bit darker than our curly kale. So here we have two very different flowers. This is a little tiny daffodil and these are teeny tiny thyme blossoms. You can see that they both have petals but if you look at the inner structure of both of them, they can be pretty different. 
but they both have the same function of attracting pollinators. So here we have our fig tree. And if you look closely, you see little tiny figs growing. But they won't be ready until late summer. So instead, I brought some examples from the store so that we could examine fruits further. Our strawberry has seeds on the exterior, and they're really teeny tiny seeds. Our clementine, on the other hand, has a skin that we then peel that allows us to see its flesh, and then it has a little bit bigger seeds on the inside. Thank you all for joining me in the garden today. Now that you all have a better understanding of the six plant parts and how they help create our garden superheroes that we have all, all around, I want you to help create our fantastic career sidekicks. When you're done making your superhero, be sure to tag us at City Blossoms so that we can see your fantastic designs. Until next time, see you later.